It was right at three months ago that we last took a look at the Atari 50th Anniversary Flashback Gold Unit from At Games. Now we gave it a full review and we did a follow-up where we showed you how to add thousands more games to the unit and we even did some analysis videos where we were figuring out just what was up with those paddles and why they didn't feel quite right. Uh, I'm going to be referencing a lot of videos in this video and links to all of them will be in the description of course. But the reason there's a follow-up today is because At Games has released an updated firmware that is supposed to fix, among other things, that paddle problem where it was kind of bunched up on the right hand side and it was, uh, you know, there, you remember, look at the old videos. Anyway, uh, the new firmware is out. I've had a lot of questions, people asking me, what does it do? What does it undo? That sort of thing. So in this video, I'm gonna update my Atari Flashback Gold. We're gonna take a look and see how it affects the paddles. And we're gonna answer some of your questions. We're gonna get after it right after this. This video supported in part by well, in VR, I tend to sweat. It gives me an edge. So King of Nerds happens to give me an edge, too. Let King of Nerds give you the edge. Bye, King of Nerds. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John, and I am a Gen X Grown Up. Thank you so much for the click. Our little Atari 50th Anniversary Flashback Gold Unit. Back when we reviewed it, even then, I noted that something seemed weird about the paddle control. At the time, I thought they were just tight, but in follow-up videos, we did some uh, little MacGyvering to figure out just what the problem was. And the problem was that data was bunching up on the right half of the screen and stretching out on the left half. Now, compound that with a little bit of latency that comes from digital to analog conversion, and what you had was paddle control that was pfft, not really great. Uh, but an update just the other day, my friend John over at Wagner's Tech Talk dropped me a line to say, hey, you know there's a brand new firmware that fixes these problems. Uh, now, not that I don't trust John, but I wanna find out for myself. So let's go and download the stuff. Now, all the links that we need are in the description of this video. There are a couple ways you can upgrade the firmware, and I'm gonna kind of gloss over this because if you wanna see the full detail, I'm gonna link you to John's video where he walks through the steps to do this manually with a computer. Now, you can go and download this Android tool as well as the new firmware. You can unpack all the folders onto your computer desktop, plug the flashback unit into your computer with a micro USB cord, and use this Android update tool to flash the firmware. Before you update your unit, you can see the firmware is going to be this 1.0.0, but after the update, if you're successful, it should read 1.1. Zero. Now it's worth noting that if you don't want to go through all of these steps or you don't have a PC available or you don't have the proper cable, if you have the OTG cable and you did the upgrade process some months ago, you can use that cable. So I'll link you to that video directly here, but essentially at the beginning step, rename the Atari update.img file with the new 1.1.0 firmware that you downloaded and rename it to Atari update.img. You see the flashbacks internals know to look on the external drive to see if there's a file named Atari underscore update.img. And if there is, it will perform the firmware update for you without any need of another computer. Now, if you would like a little more guidance through this firmware update process, I will link to John Wagner's video up in the corner and you can go and watch that as well as his companion website article that has full instructions and you can walk through that. More importantly, what I wanted to cover in this video, I just want to rush to get to this part, was to find out what good this firmware update does for us. Now, one thing that it does fix, which was not something I was really upset about, was that if you have paddles on the left controller and you plug in the joystick in the right controller, you can't use the menu buttons to back out or to go to you know, snapshot or save state. Well, now you can, so they fixed that. The part I most care about is the paddle performance. Now, you might remember in one of those previous videos, I came up with this clever slash weird slash MacGyvery kind of idea to measure how far I have rotated the paddle in order to compare that to the on-screen results. And in this case, again, I'm gonna use Breakout as my example game. Let me remind you of what the old firmware looked like. Notice how the numbers seem to be okay for a while. Then when you get about mid-screen, they start bunching up. Now that means you have to turn much, much faster to get through the right-hand side than the left-hand side. And it just resulted in a frustrating amount of gameplay. For reference then, let me remind you what it looks like using these paddles on a real Atari 2600. Note that the disbursement of numbers as we work our way around the dial are quite even. And maybe even more importantly here, I want you to note that it takes about four to four and a half notches, four and a half spots on that paddle of rotation to make your way from one side of the screen to the other. Okay, now I've repeated that test under the new firmware. 
So check this out. Disbursement of my individual markers across the screen is much more even. Not perfect, but much more even. And I will say that this is not a scientific test. I don't have a potentiometer. I'm not measuring down to the absolute degree, but much more even. However, you'll notice that it takes about eight and a half notches to make your way from one side of the screen to the other. So if you're familiar with what a game feels like on the Atari 2600, when you go to play it on this updated firmware with a paddle, it means you're gonna have to turn about twice as far as you usually did to get from one side of the screen to the other. That means all adjustments are gonna be roughly doubled. Now I tested out this new firmware myself with a couple of good paddle games. I used Breakout and Kaboom. And what I found that control of paddle games was much better here. Moving my character across the screen was no longer unpredictable. In fact, it moved pretty consistently from left to right. And I found that I was able to do pretty good. Although again, I did have to move the paddle farther than I'm accustomed to in order to make movements on the screen. So using this firmware might come down to preference. Are you waiting for a perfectly accurate representation of what it was like playing on the 2600 mapped onto this flashback? Because that in combination with, of course, a little bit of digital analog latency means that it's not perfect, but it's much, much better. But maybe even more importantly is if you're okay with this change the firmware introduces with the paddles, it is an improvement, most certainly, but you also ran the update to add thousands of games to your flashback using the OTG cable and an external USB drive. When you flash the firmware, those changes will be gone. Now you can still play games from the game folder under the external USB drive, but you can no longer have the full layout of games and their box art and descriptions and instructions and all of that, that will be gone. Now, in order to get that back, it's gonna require someone else in the Atari community to go and make a modification to this firmware. But I would argue that it's probably not the right time to do that because the paddle control here, while better, is still not right. I mean, it's at least make it the right distance from left to right. At games, send me your demos of this firmware. I will tell you when it gets close enough to the Atari 2600, I promise. So again, it's gonna come down to where your comfort zone is. If you love what the At Games does, you didn't bother to upgrade it, but you would like your paddle control to be better, absolutely update the firmware to this version. If you want correct paddle control, and you wanna maintain your access to all those other games, I would say wait a little bit. This one is, I mean, it's publicly released, but I would assert it's not yet fully baked. So all the links to the things I've talked about are in the description of this video. Uh, let me know what you plan to do. And I will say for my part, I am very happy that At Games is listening to the community and is trying to improve upon the product. It would be very easy to ship it and forget about it, and that's not happening here. So I applaud At Games for that work, and I'm excited to see the next version of this firmware that gets it maybe, maybe even a little bit better. And then of course, we'll have to wait for the community to give us the ability to hack all of our games onto it, but they'll be on that right away, I expect. Look, I'm gonna throw some links over my shoulders here and here to some more coverage I've done of this flashback gold. I certainly hope you found something to enjoy in this video though, and I can't wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.